T-minus seven days and counting, prepared and ready, be vigilant. Now before I get started, I wanted to talk about the deep state. We know they continually push their goals, and we know that they try every trick in the book to scare the American people. And one of the best things you can invest in for your home and for your protection is a Patriot flashlight. Now this flashlight is solar powered, so you're never going to waste money on batteries again. It has emergency strobe light, it has a USB port, it has a compass, rope, wire cutter, and a siren to ward off individuals. Patriot flashlight is the perfect gift for you and your family. Go to PatriotFlashlight.com, use the promo code X20, and get 20% off the Patriot flashlight. Let's get into the economic collapse, political and geopolitical news. Now the countdown is continuing. It looks like we have seven days until we hit March 19th. Does this mean that there's going to be a D-class and they're just going to throw everything out there all at once? No. Trump, Q, the Patriots, they're not going to play their hand just yet. We're going to see something else happen once we hit that countdown. Remember, we have many other countdowns that we're following. And I believe this is just the first step. And this is why Q is saying there's going to be big, big happenings coming very, very soon, probably within seven days. The D class and everything else, the OIG report and everything else, will be played later on. This will be the last move because you only get to do this once. It's not like you have three or four D classes where four or five OIG reports. You only have one, and it has to be done correctly. And like I said in the other report, the whole purpose of all of this that we're watching is to trap the enemy in the corner and expose them for what they have done. And during this process, they, the Patriots need to make sure that there is no escape. They can't go in any direction. They are trapped. That is the whole point of this. And we can see there's a lot of different things happening all at the same time. And many people think like, oh, it just this is just happening. This has no connection to the plan. Oh, this is happening. This has no connection to the plan. But if you really start to put everything together, you're going to see there's a lot of things that actually fall into the plan. And many of the things that we were seeing today out in the news, it is happening on purpose. Just like Trump out there calling the mainstream media fake news. There was a purpose in this, to wake up the everyday person, to make them understand that there are no facts when the mainstream media is reporting. They're getting it from anonymous sources, and a lot of times it's coming from the intelligence organizations or they're just making it up. I mean, if we go back in time, you can see with Russian collusion, North Korea, and everything else, most of it was fake. And then they go back and they change their headlines, they change, you know, whatever is within the article and they do whatever they have to do to cover it up. But you can see there's been layoffs with the mainstream media. Right now, New York Magazine, they're laying off 5%. And there are many newspapers that are closing. There are many news outlets that are closing. And even the mainstream media, the national outlets, they're not doing well at all. Everything is on a decline. And they're having trouble because it's being brought to their attention that a lot of the news that you're hearing is not real. A lot of people today are looking in all other places to find real news. And they're not looking at the mainstream media anymore. They're just making it worse for themselves as time goes on. And you can see that when the public starts to look away from the mainstream media, you know you have a problem where people don't believe you anymore. And when people don't believe you anymore, you don't get the ratings. You don't get the commercials. You have to lay off staff. And this is what we are seeing today. We also see that feds arrested dozens, including famous actresses and movie stars, TV stars, and CEOs. And why are they being arrested? Why are they being charged? Well, they're being charged with conspiracy to commit mail fraud. 38 people have reportedly been arrested thus far. 
Prosecutors are alleging that the individuals charged tried to bribe college entrance, entrance exam officials in order to cheat on admission tests and that some conspired to bribe coaches and administrators to labor their children as recruited athletes to get them into schools. And some of the colleges that were involved are Georgetown University, Yale University, Stanford University, University of California, Los Angeles, and there are many others. And we can see this whole thing is falling apart for these wealthy elite people. Some of the actresses are Felicity Huffman, Lori Laughlin, and there are many others. Now, the question is, why is this coming out now? Why were the sealed indictments unsealed? Remember, this whole scam that was going on with all these colleges, this has been going on since 2011, and it was continued all the way up to today until all of this fell apart. But we need to go back to post 2989. Q wrote, do people follow the stars? Yes, they do. They follow the stars because the deep state controls Hollywood, controls the stars, and they use the stars to push their agenda. How do you turn people away from the stars? How do you get people not to listen to the stars? Well, you unseal the indictments and you show the world that these stars are not above everyone else. If you show them being caught up in some type of crime, people stop looking up to them. People don't listen to them. And I believe this is one part of the plan. And I believe they have other things on other individuals, maybe like pedophilia, human trafficking, sex rings, you name it. And I believe this will be coming out very soon. We see Representative Doug Collins. He released unredacted Lisa Page testimony to Congress. He said his patience with the Department of Justice had grown thin, so he released the testimony. And Collins plans on releasing more testimony. He tweeted out the following. Today the link, and he gave a link, will be placed in the record so the American people can read the transcripts of Lisa Page's interviews before the Judiciary Committee. And the transcript is about 205 pages long. And if you'd like to read it, you can come over to the X-22 report or go to Representative Doug Collins. Look at his Twitter feed. He also gives the link. Now Schiff, he is really panicking right now. Cohen was a nothing burger. Cohen actually hurt Schiff's and Nadler's case. I mean, according to Cohen's testimony, he showed the public that he's a liar. He actually exonerated Trump from Russia collusion. And we need to remember that the deep state, they selected Mueller at the special counsel. And now they've lost control of him. They're not, he, well, Mueller is not doing what they wanted him to do. Find dirt on Trump. This is why Rod Rosenstein had that other memo letting him go in all different directions. Barr came in and said, no, 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 Russian collusion only. So Schiff is out there, and he is saying that it may be necessary for lawmakers to call Special Counsel Robert Mueller to testify the Department of Justice tries to stifle his final report from Congress or the public. Well, we already know from Nadler, from the mainstream media, from Clapper, and the rest that the Mueller report is going to show absolutely nothing. Schiff is just grandstanding right now. And he's trying to show that, oh, if they try to hide something, we're bringing them in for questioning. Yeah, and you bring him in for questioning, guess what? He's going to tell you what's in the report. That's it. We see Judicial Watch now is suing the Justice Department for all of Deputy Attorney Rod Rosenstein's communications from around the firing of FBI Director James Comey and the appointment of Special Counsel Robert Mueller. So, we know that Comey was fired on May 7th, and Mueller was appointed by Rosenstein on May 17th to lead the investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 election and possible collusion between the Trump campaign and the Kremlin. The 10-day time span has come under increased scrutiny in recent weeks due to claims by former FBI Director Andrew McCabe during his book tour. These critical days in May, a scant three months into Trump's term, 
included extraordinary targeting of Trump by Ron Rosenstein and other deep state officials by the Department of Justice and FBI. So Tom Fitton, he wants this communication record. He wants to see what was said during this period of time. And we'll have to wait to see what it actually says when he gets it. We see Trump right now is considering classifying drug cartels as foreign terrorist organizations. Trump said the following, they've totally lost control of the cartels. Mexico last year had 42,000 deaths, murders. It's considered one of the most unsafe countries in the world. And we need to do something. Build a wall, make these drug cartels terrorists, and shut it all down. Now in Venezuela, we see that Venezuela has decided not to grant a new extension for the performance of the U.S. diplomatic agents still present in the country, and they want all personnel out of the country. Mike Pompeo said the United States made the decision to withdraw all remaining diplomats from Venezuela due to security concerns. Now this is very interesting because we know that these individuals, these diplomats, these government officials in these embassies, well, they're all not on the up and up. We know from Q that many of these individuals within Congress and around the world, they are CIA operatives. What better way to drain and get rid of these operators in Venezuela? Well, let the deep state, let the Nikons do what they do best, create chaos within the country, have this blackout, which most likely the deep state neocons created, make everything crazy, and make it seem like, well, we have national security concerns, and we need to remove all personnel from Venezuela. Which means those CIA operative operatives, the deep state individuals within the embassy, they are now being removed from the country very interesting and they did it in such a way where it gives them an excuse to remove those operatives without calling attention to the situation and it's a perfect cover story and it worked absolutely perfectly let's get into some of Q's post right now this is post 3026 Q from January 27, 2018, gave us heart attacks can be deadly, and then gave us another post from February 7th, 2018, and it said heart attacks can be deadly. Now, these were two posts. This was 634 and also 677, where Q said heart attacks can be deadly. Actually, in post 635, Q says the following, mourn, murder, heart attack, coincidence. This was on January 27th right after post 634 which said heart attacks can be deadly and post 677 had the same exact message and this had to do with John Perry Barlow now for those who don't know there is something called a heart attack gun it shoots a dart the dart is frozen and the poison is inside the dart and it leaves no trace except a little red dot uh, when it enters the body now what's very interesting is that John Perry Barlow he did have a heart condition, but the doctor said that he was in good shape. So this allowed the CIA and other operatives to use the heart attack gun to say, yeah, look, he had heart problems, he had a heart attack. Now in the 70s, during a hearing in front of Congress, it was revealed that the CIA had a gun that could kill a person, making it look like a heart attack. Take a listen. Fire the dart? Yes, it does, Mr. Chairman. And a special one was developed which potentially would be able to uh, enter the target without perception. The, the poison was frozen into some sort of dart and then it was shot at uh, very high speed into the person so at, when it reached the person it would melt inside them and the only thing would be like one little tiny red dot on their body which was hard to detect there wouldn't be a needle left or anything like that in the person have you brought with you um, some of those devices which would have enabled the CIA to use this poison for we have indeed for killing people 
The round thing at the top is obviously the sight. It works by electricity. There's a battery in the handle, and it fires a small dart. And the dart itself, when it strikes the, the, the uh, target, um, does the uh, target know that he's, about, he's been hit and about to die? A special one was developed, which potentially would be able to uh, enter the target without perception. As a murder instrument, that's about as efficient as you can get, isn't it? It, it, it is a weapon, a very serious weapon. But all and I do believe Q is letting us know that they already knew about this. How do they know about this? Well, they're using Angel Fire. They have the keystone, and they are hearing the communication that is going on with the CIA. And they're using it to predict what is going to happen. Post 3027. And Anand posted a Q proof from Borlo's death. And it says proofs are important. Q refers us back to the post where it says heart attacks can be deadly. It also gives us John Perry Barlow when he died, February 7, 2018, San Francisco, California. Now below this, it says gotcha Q. And then Q says time in Russia, question mark. So it was Barlow in Russia gives us kill brackets, all bold, eighth and it says do you believe in coincidences intercepts are revealing so Q knew what was about to happen 11 days in advance Q knew that Barlow was going to die of a heart attack who was responsible most likely Brennan CIA because Q told us who was the director of the CIA during this period and it was Brennan so Q is also telling us that Barlow died in Russia on the 8th. So, how did he die in Russia on the 8th if it says that John Perry Barlow died February 7, 2018 in San Francisco? Well, Russia is a day ahead. So, it looks like, from what Q is saying, Barlow died in Russia and the story was he died in San Francisco. Now, was the body transported back to San Francisco? Most likely. And this was the cover story for the death of John Perry Barlow. Post 3028, Q says, Rod Rosenstein deposition week. Well, officially, Rosenstein is expected to depart in the middle of March, the latter part of March. So, most likely, his deposition is going to be very, very soon, within this week or next week. Rod Rosenstein departure thereafter, this is what they're saying. Yes, he's supposed to depart. Mueller, this is in kill brackets, all bold. Report post-deposition of Rod Rosenstein? Maybe. Don't know for sure. Mueller sealed indictments installed D.C. prior to Rod Rosenstein lost to power? Yes, Mueller had sealed indictments installed in D.C. Sealed indictments, D.C. blockade, last resort, installed, installed post-sessions, departure of Whitaker assumption? Yes, I believe there were indictments that were put aside to be used later on if things didn't go the way they wanted. Q said sealed indictment count DC post sessions departure sealed indictment count DC pre Whitaker assumption power of bar can a sealed indictment be pulled post filing? Well here is an Annan's response to this. The Fourth Amendment violations. The Fourth Amendment protects citizens against unlawful searches and seizures by police investigators and law enforcement. Any evidence illegally obtained can and should be excluded from the case. Prosecutors may drop a criminal charge if it's determined that some of their evidence was legally obtained and is inadmissible in court. A skilled defense attorney can show if that has happened, perhaps due to police failure to get a proper warrant to search for evidence. Any evidence found without securing a proper warrant is then deemed inadmissible and may lead to a prosecutor dropping or dismissing the criminal charge. So if we go back to what Q is saying here, can a sealed indictment be pulled post-filing? Another edit says, assuming Q means post-filing with a court, the indictment cannot just disappear. If the rules are followed, there can be an action by the prosecutor to withdraw one or all of the court's charges contained in the indictment. That can occur without the person named as the defendant in the indictment ever appearing in court. If the prosecutor withdraws all of the courts in the indictment, this is one way to use informal expression, the indictment has been pulled. Now I think if these indictments were 
gathered and created with false information, they can use this to pull the indictments. Q went on to say, Mueller report with an arrow pointing to Barr. Yes, Mueller is going to give the report to Barr. Bruce Orr deposition last week. Yes, Bruce Orr testimony dump thereafter. Bruce Orr departure thereafter. Yes. What other dumps are scheduled to occur? Think timing. So it looks like there's going to be other dumps. They're scheduled to occur, and I'm thinking it's going to be Ron Rosenstein. It's going to be Page. It's going to be Struck. It's going to be many others. Q continued, Pelosi, pull threat to impeach. Well, Pelosi knows they cannot get the vote in the Senate for impeachment. You see it all over the mainstream media right now where Pelosi is saying it's just not worth it to impeach. Well, she knows she can't impeach. It's impossible. She's playing her hand right now to say, listen, we won't follow through on the impeachment if you stop the D-class. And Q says, effort to prevent D-class? Yes. Q went on to say, letter to POTUS from Pelosi Schumer today. Well, this was a joint statement on President Trump's new demand for the wall funding, March 10th, 2019. Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senate Democratic Leader Chuck Schumer released a joint statement on reports that President Trump will request $8.6 billion for his expensive and ineffective border wall. President Trump hurt millions of Americans and caused widespread chaos when he recklessly shut down the government to try to get his expensive and ineffective wall, which he promised would be paid for by Mexico. Congress refused to fund his wall, and he was forced to admit defeat and reopen the government. The same thing will repeat itself if he tries this again. We hope he learned a lesson. Well, first of all, Trump has half the money right now. Part of the money is being challenged in court. Trump did renegotiate NAFTA, and Trump did save billions and billions of dollars from this terrible deal from Mexico. So indirectly, yes, Mexico is now paying for the wall. And I never really believed, and I don't think Trump actually really believed that Mexico was going to write a check. He knew that he was going to be going after NAFTA, and he knew that was a terrible deal, and he knew that he could save billions and billions of dollars by renegotiating it. Now, do I think that's the end of this new trade deal? No, I think he's going to get rid of it altogether and completely redo it. There are certain parts in Congress that he couldn't even touch because this is how they create their legislation. It makes it very difficult to unwind everything. But let me continue. Subject of the letter. Q is letting us know that Trump is going to continue to push to expose the deep state. This will push them over the edge and completely expose what they're all about. Was the impeachment threat real? No. Talking points to satisfy loony left. Sheep do not think for themselves. Base. Talking points meant to protect outrage across America using fake news blowhorn to justify fake investigations and take in donor support. Impeachment requires facts. Impeachment requires two, two-thirds vote of the Senate. Propaganda, propaganda arm of the D party fake news is losing control of the narrative. The truth will always win. Transparency and equal justice under the law. Save America. Q. Let's move on to post 3029. Q gave us a Twitter link to Buddha Katz. It says, actually, we hate Trump because he can't do anything right. And Q says, 4 to 6%, this is in brackets and bold, brainwashed, will never wake up even when presented with facts. Then gave us a link to whitehouse.gov, and this is the historic result of President Trump first two years in office. And it lists all of Trump's accomplishments. But no one wants to see the accomplishments. They don't really care about that. They don't want him in office. And all these shills and trolls and everything else, their job is to make everyone believe that Trump has done absolutely nothing. But think about what he has done. He renegotiated the globalist trade deal, got rid of the TPP, denounced globalism. How many people resigned? How many people were fired from the FBI Department of Justice? Released the statement for declassification got rid of these wasteful programs, shutting them down, exposing the deep state for what they really are, calling out the fake news, showing the world that our economy is great. I mean, all of this is part of the plan. Post 3030, 
gives us the same link to whitehouse.gov. And Q says, memes, memes, and more memes. Wake up, America. Facts matter. Save America. Unat- United, not divided. Where we go on, we go all. Post 3031. Q says, number one. Jeremy Herb tweeted the following. George and Simona Papadopoulos on the Hill this morning heading into the Senate Intelligence Committee. George Papadopoulos responded, coffee in hand. Papadopoulos is meeting with the Senate Intel Committee to testify. Number two, give us the Epic Times. And this is interview with FBI Gaida, central to Russiagate, among 53 transcripts slated for release. Let me just read a portion of this. The House Intelligence Committee voted on September 28th to release the transcripts of 53 interviews conducted during the committee's investigation of Russian interference during the 2016 presidential election. The interviews include high-level officials of the Obama administration, such as former Director of National Intelligence James Clapper, former Attorney General Loretta Lynch, former Deputy Attorney General Sally Yates, and former National Security Advisor Susan Rice. Gaida was and possibly still is, the assistant legal attaché at the United States Embassy in Rome. Until 2014, he headed the FBI Eurasian Organized Crime Unit. It was Guido who reportedly, on July 5, 2016, traveled to London to meet with the former British spy Christopher Steele, the author of the dossier. The trip was reportedly authorized by Victoria Nuland, then Assistant State Secretary for Eurasian Affairs. Q says 1 equals 2. Q. Let's continue with post 3032, gives us everything from 3031, and gives us brackets, bold, Michael Gaida, FBI, Rome, and in the article it says all roads lead to Rome, and basically through the article it shows that how Papadopoulos was set up, they kind of directed him into having this meeting with Mifsud, who was a Maltese professor, and Papadopoulos didn't even know what was going on. The whole thing was completely set up to create and get the FISA spy warrant. Let's move on to post 3033. Q gives us a link, Kane underscore Nate, and it says, Some very suspicious things have taken place today concerning my family. I can't get into detail, but it left us all more than a little disturbed. Please play for us and for our protection for the public record. I am not suicidal. I'm in good health and avoid risky behavior. Q says, stay in the light, remain in open comms with Senator Graham and Grassley, RE Whistleblower Protection Act. They will take care, they will take your phone calls. Nate Kane responded with a tweet. I don't know who Q is, but I am grateful for him. I put out a request for prayer. He dropped it on 8chan, and the next thing you know, tens of thousands were praying for me and my family. Let's move on to post 3034. Q gives us a link to MT, M2 Madness. This entire conversation is very telling. Sean Hannity, we learned today that those investigations have been ongoing, and they're happening, and they're real. Sarah Carter, that's right. Sean Hannity, and there's other things that are about to happen that I know you know. Let's take a listen to what they said. We'll start with you because you've been investigating this from day one, is that they don't have anything. And now that we had last Friday the beginning of the release of all the depositions, we also see a lot of criminal activity, uh, especially as it relates to the dossier, is at the heart and soul of all of this, and everybody was warned, never verified, still hated Trump, Hillary paid for it, the DNC paid for it, the FBI paid for it, the Russian oligarchs paid for it, and Steele doesn't stand by it, so you can't verify it. Yeah, so think about this, Sean. You just laid it out perfectly. There, there is absolutely no evidence that we've seen yet. We know Senator Burr has already come out publicly and said if he were to write the report today, he would actually have to write the report stating that there was absolutely no evidence of collusion or conspiracy between the Trump campaign and Russia. But what we've seen over the last two years with all the investigations being conducted by Congress, uh, the investigations that I've been on, John Solomon, you've been on, everything that we've reported shows a direct line between Russia and the Hillary Clinton campaign. 
This is what's so incredible. So if anything needs to be investigated, and not only that, we've not only seen that, we also saw extensive abuse and malfeasance in the FBI, what we're seeing with the FISA documentation. And here you have Adam Schiff, who is so desperate that something come out that he's moving forward with his own investigations into, with absolutely no criminal evidence of anything. So if anything is going to come out of this, I think right now what we're seeing is that there needs to be a full-fledged investigation by the Department of Justice well, into we, we, what is alleged know. and believed to be criminal activity. We learned today, on Hillary and I, I want to get side. some analysis from Pam, we learned today that those investigations have been ongoing and they're happening and they're That's real. Right. And there's other things that are about to happen that I know you know. Now, as you can see, they were discussing what is about to happen. And Q says, do you believe the timing is a coincidence? No. The timing is not a coincidence. They were told to do this. They were pushing this information out there. It was part of the plan. Q says, stay tuned. Q. Now, we know that the D-Class, the OIG report, and many other things are going to come to light. I believe we're going to see many things happen before the D-Class, before the OIG, building up to the D-Class. And I said this before, that we need to be concerned about what the deep state is going to do. And Trump tweeted out something very interesting today. He said, airplanes are becoming far too complex to fly. Pilots are no longer needed, but rather computer scientists from MIT. I see it all the time in many products, always seeking to go one unnecessary step further, when often old and simpler is far better. Split-second decisions are needed, and the complexity creates danger. All of this for great cost, yet very little gain. I don't know about you, but I don't want Albert Einstein to be my pilot. I want great flying professionals that are allowed to easily and quickly take control of a plane. Now, I do believe that Trump is out there and he's tweeting this information, which makes me think of 9-11, makes me think of the planes being remote controlled, where they can fly without a pilot. And I believe Trump is out there dropping breadcrumbs, letting everyone know we need to discontinue with the computers flying the plane. Now, what's very interesting is that the United Kingdom Civil Aviation Authority decided to ban the Boeing 737 MAX 8 aircraft from its airspace after two fatal crashes involving the plane. And the UK joined China, Indonesia, Ethiopia, Australia, and Singapore. Now, these aircrafts, they were computer controlled. And again, Trump is out there, and I think he's dropping some hints that we need to get rid of this because the intelligence organizations, the deep state, uses these type of controls to create false flags. And we know that once the D-Class comes, we know the deep state, they're going to try to do something. And I mentioned my two videos that were restricted about false flags in multiple cities. And this doesn't mean it's going to be a bomb. It doesn't mean it's going to be something like that. Because what's very interesting is out of the independent, and I see these articles continually coming out, they're talking about enormous solar storms that are just around the corner and they can come out of nowhere. Now, the mainstream media, they can use this to explain why the communication network has gone down. And they can push the story out there saying, yes, it was because of a solar storm. And this is why we don't have Twitter right now. This is why we don't have YouTube right now. This is why we don't have the search engines. This is why we don't have the internet. The only thing that we have is the mainstream media and they're the ones who are going to tell you what is going on and we might see power outages but then again Q told us that the infrastructure is protected but something Q did tell us in post 2793 that might fit into this this is February 18th 2019 Q is preparing for when the D class comes and the OIG report comes out and the deep state tries to take action to stop all this and change you know, the news cycle and point us in a completely different direction. This is what Q said. Chatter uptick. How to effectively prevent crosstalk, re anti-narrative across all social media online platforms. Ability to prevent crosstalk narrows comms only to fake news, which provides for more control over what is released to inform the public. A series of scenarios is currently being conducted. 
Game the system to test response risk and calculation results. Censorship added layers of inserted code through keyword targeting in bio, history, and comments. Plus, individual platform mods has failed to curtail the problem. China, Russia, Iran fake takedown hacks of selected platforms for maintenance is one scenario being gameplayed. Zero day, this is in bold brackets. Countermeasures in place. Example, think emergency alert system. Think White House control new RT news website. Think White House controlled new video stream platform. Think here. Think HM. Should this occur, immediate steps will be taken to classify each as a public utility, essential public services, to gain appropriate government regulation control. Why do we make things public? To be transparent, to have control over it. So think about what Q has been saying in the beginning of this. The deep state is trying to figure out a way to shut down communication once the news comes out. And now they're pushing these articles about these solar storms. And they don't know statistically how often these events occur, but they're saying that one is right around the corner. Because from Q, we can see that censorship is not working. We can see that everything else they tried is not working. So they might just try an all-out major blackout, blaming it on a solar storm. This way, their hands are clean. The social media companies, they say, hey, we had nothing to do with this. And they have some type of story that they can put out there to say, this was an act of God. It just happened. And the only thing we have up and running is the news stations, or maybe even print. Think about it for a second. But Q and team, they're telling us that they have this covered. So let's think about this for a second. Let's say there is, you know, something happening around the country where it takes out communications, or maybe even power, for a little while. Well, Q has told us if, let's say, the solar storm, the fake solar storm hits, and communication is blocked out, Q is telling us that they have the emergency alert system. If the deep state tries to use the television network, well, the White House, because if it is a national emergency, they can take over the stations with the emergency alert system. If phones still work, they can display the message on the phones. And the White House is now controlling and creating their RT News website so they can give us the news over the same networks. So it looks like they're prepared and ready for anything that happens. And if they have to take control over the social media giants, they will. Stay vigilant, everyone. I believe we're going to see some strange things moving forward. Listen, everyone, thanks a lot for listening. Be well, be safe, and especially be prepared. Thanks a lot.